Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Today is uh, Thursday, June, I'm sorry, Wednesday, June 19th. And today we are continuing to talk about prophecies about Jesus. We are going to wrap up this series on Friday, and we will be starting a new series next week. So I'm getting, uh, I found this wonderful table on gotquestions.org. It gives you the prophecy. It tells you where in the Old Testament and where in the New Testament you can find those prophecies. Um, the prophecies were, were spoken and then the prophecies were fulfilled. So this next one is Simeon. Remember, Simeon's the one that meets them in the temple. Now this is not in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. We're getting into New Testament prophecy now that Jesus fulfills the prophecy is proclaimed when he's a baby and then fulfilled as he when he becomes an adult. So Simeon said that um, Jesus will cause many hearts to be revealed. What's that mean? Doesn't mean he's going to cut people open and show them their hearts. What it means is their true motives are going to come out in the open through Jesus. So in where do we see this prophecy spoken? In Luke 2, 34 to 35, it says, And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts will be revealed." And then in Matthew 27, 18, it said, for he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered the hymn up. Now there's many, many other passages where Jesus pointed out the, the nasty motives that the Pharisees and the Sadducees had. Next, this one, um, this prophecy is spoken in Malachi 3, one through thir three verses one through three. And it's saying that the Lord's gonna come to the temple and refine the silver and the priests. And Jesus came to the temple and he changed things around. There were, there were all these money being changed and um, a lot of dishonest exchanges happening so people could make their sacrifices. The people were basically being robbed by these money changers. And Jesus got mad and he started throwing the tables and said that it is written that it's supposed to be a house of prayer. So where do we see this? In Malachi 3, verses 1 through 3, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and, the full, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in the righteousness to the Lord. So in Matthew 21, 12, it says, Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. We see that again in Mark eleven fifteen to 19. And then again in John 2, verses 13 to 17. So this is Jesus going in and saying, what you're doing here is wrong. I'm not going to tolerate it. I'm putting a stop to it. And he flings these tables. They get flipped. It's, it, it's um, biblical proof that it's okay to have that righteous anger and call something out and say, you know what? This is evil. It's okay to do that. But we need to be there for that moment of redemption. We need to be there for that moment of forgiveness and say, let me come alongside you and help you through what you're going through. Remember that Jesus has forgiven you of so much. He's, and the Holy Spirit is taking you through this entire process of pointing out things in your life that don't glorify God. And as we grow in our relationship with Christ, we work on those things one thing at a time. Let him mold you. Let him change you. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.